I am campaigns manager for uh, the Australian grassroots campaign movement, Collective Shout for a World Free of Sexploitation. And I'm also a PhD candidate uh, where I'm researching female bodied sex dolls and robots. Just wanna check everyone can hear me. I can hear you. Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> Sorry, just looking at the chat. Okay, that's great. All right, so today I'm gonna to be speaking on child sex dolls and discussing some of the arguments made in support of their development. So-called child sex dolls are lifelike, anatomically correct sex dolls modeled on the bodies of children, typically girls, and marketed for men's sexual use. Their bodies, facial features, and weight are similar to a living child, but they are also designed to accommodate an adult male's penis. Dolls like these are already on the market and they have been sold through mainstream online retailers like Amazon, eBay and Wish. And experts believe that child sex robots will be next and that they may already be in production. So before I really get into this, I just wanna talk a little bit about the language we use around this issue. Language and terminology can play an important role in shaping attitudes and understandings as feminists well know. For example, what was once known as child pornography is now increasingly referred to as child sexual abuse material or child sexual exploitation material to reflect the reality that it is images or video of children and babies being raped and abused and tortured. On the other hand, the language in law used to describe crimes of violence against children sometimes conflates the sexual abuse of children with consensual sex. The journalistic use of terms like having intercourse, underage sex, or child sex, and referring to a sexual relationship or a sexual affair, frame child victims as willing participants in their abuse, despite the fact that legally children cannot consent to sexual abuse. So given this, I suggest that we reconsider the term, the popular term child sex doll, and instead use the term child sex abuse dolls, which Kathleen and others have used, just because it's a more appropriate term for these products. Now, some academics and advocates for child sex abuse dolls have proposed that they could be made available to pedophiles for therapeutic purposes and pitch the dolls as a possible solution to child sexual abuse, speculating that if pedophiles can simulate child sexual abuse on these childlike dolls, it could prevent their abuse of living children. And one of the arguments uh, in support of child sex abuse dolls uh, that, that we hear a lot is that they are sex toys like any other. And this is something I've heard from the US-based organization Prostasia. I'm not sure if it's the same one that Sheila has just mentioned. Uh, so the, this um, Prostasia Foundation described the use of child sex abuse dolls as the personal and private use of sex toys and claims that laws against them are therefore unconstitutional misguided and immoral. Tweeting about child sex abuse dolls, Canadian psychologist and neuroscientist James Cantor wrote, I'm okay with latex sex dolls and I don't care what they look like. And Australia protecting society from crimes against latex, thought crimes against latex. If child sex abuse dolls are merely sex toys like any other, then it could theoretically be argued that they don't raise any unique ethical issues. But child sex abuse dolls and, and sex dolls and robots more generally are distinct from traditional sex toys on the basis of their embodiment in human form, specifically the female form. They're not merely latex sex toys. They are lifelike, anatomically correct representations of girls designed for men's sexual use. So their childlike appearance is not incidental. It's, it's the whole point. Child sex abuse dolls are intentionally designed to look and feel like a real child, to facilitate men's embodied fantasy experience of raping a little girl. If they were nothing more than a latex sex toy, then we have to ask, why are they even shaped like children? And why are some of these dolls marketed in such a way as to eroticize predation on children uh, with some facial expressions on the dolls that you know, they appear to be crying or in pain? So the ability to simulate child sex abuse is precisely the draw card for these users. Indeed, this is why some academics pitch these products as an alternative to sexually abusing a child because they believe the dolls could function as stand-ins for living children. 
some advocates characterize the use of child sex abuse dolls as a victimless crime, putting childlike dolls in the same category as sexualized depictions of children in drawings or cartoons, or artificial or computer generated child abuse material, because no child is abused in their production. Under Australian law, where I'm from, this content constitutes illegal child sexual abuse material as depictions of child abuse, including virtual child sexual abuse, are thought to normalize the sexual use and abuse of children and encourage offenders. The United Nations has taken the same approach to virtual child abuse material. From the 2020 United Nations report from the Special Rapporteur on the sale and sexual exploitation of children, I quote, the increased accessibility and availability of child sexual abuse material online appears to normalize this crime and may encourage potential offenders and increase the severity of abuse. This includes new phenomena such as drawings and virtual representations of non-existing children in a sexualized manner, widely available on the internet. The increasing social acceptance of early sexualization is exacerbated by the widespread dissemination of child sexual abuse material on the internet and the production of highly realistic representations of non-existing children. This objectification of children comforts offenders in their actions, end quote. Child sex abuse dolls legitimize and normalize children as sexual objects and ultimately normalize the sexual use and abuse of children. Can this really be a victimless endeavor? Defenders of men's access to female bodied sex dolls and robots argue that they are objects, not moral agents, that they cannot be victims of rape or child sexual abuse and conclude there is no harm. As they say, you can't rape a robot. But feminist objections to female bodied sex dolls and robots have never focused on harm to dolls and robots or to inanimate objects. They're concerned with harm to women and children. Sex dolls and robots function as a stand-in for a woman or child, and simulating rape or child sexual abuse on a doll or a robot is a symbolic representation of the rape of a real woman or child. In his paper, Robots, Rape and Representation, philosopher and professor Robert Sparrow argues that robots designed to facilitate rape fantasies are unethical as a representation of the rape of a real woman and an endorsement and encouragement of rape that may increase the rate of rape and that expresses disrespect of women. Some academics and advocates for child sex abuse dolls claim pedophiles could use childlike dolls instead of children and that this would be a preferable outcome. Many of these advocates for child sex abuse dolls regard pedophilia as a legitimate sexual orientation, one that is unchangeable and outside the control of the individual. And they tend to be sympathetic to pedophiles with the view that sexual outlets should be made available to them. University of Oslo researchers Ol Martin Mullen and Axel Brun and Sterry argue that if pedophiles have no control over their sexual preferences, using a child sex abuse doll or robot might be one of the best strategies open to them given the unfortunate situation in which they find themselves. Likewise, author of Love and Sex with Robots, David Levy, told The Guardian, it would be preferable for pedophiles to use robots as their sexual outlets than living children. But why is it positioned as either or, as though the options are to make child sex abuse dolls or robots available to men or for men to continue sexually abusing children? It's a flawed premise. First, there's no evidence that pedophiles will use child sex abuse dolls instead of, and not in addition to children. And there's a serious risk that child sex abuse dolls will strengthen and encourage users sex, sexual desires for children. The fact that the issue is framed as a choice between child sex abuse dolls or living children, though those are the only options, that men be granted access to child sex abuse dolls or offend against actual children, is evidence of how men's sexual desires go unchallenged. Men's sexual preferences, even their desires to rape children are elevated to the status of needs that must be accommodated. Why are men's sexual desires above scrutiny? Why can't they be challenged? Why is men's complete sexual freedom prioritized over the rights of women and girls 
And how might our approach be different if we didn't begin with this premise? There's no evidence for this previously popular idea that men perpetrate sexual violence against women, children and other men due to uncontrollable sexual desire or because they don't have sufficient outlet for their urges. There's also no evidence that child sex abuse dolls will lead to a reduction in the abuse of children. There's no shortage today of sexual outlets available to men outside of intimate relationships. They can pursue casual sexual encounters through dating or hookup apps. They can access an endless supply of online pornography, webcam models, OnlyFans, or engage in cyber sex. There are thriving legalized and decriminalized sex industries where men have their pick of prostituted women and now sex doll brothels. Despite this, having access to all these sexual outlets has not stopped men from raping. On the contrary, sexual violence remains prevalent throughout the world. This argument then that child sex abuse dolls could function as a sexual outlet, preventing individuals who would otherwise rape children from doing so, also fails to consider the wider cultural context in which these products are manufactured. You know, a system of institutionalized male dominance the routine sexual objectification of women and a culture that eroticizes girls. Girls are routinely presented as sexually available and appealing, and many women report first experiencing sexual attention from men, adult men, as children. Teen porn is consistently one of Pornhub's most popular search terms year after year. Barely legal pornography depicting teen girls with flat chests, braces, uh, pigtails, th that's still widely available. Uh, Schoolgirls are fetishized and sexy schoolgirl costumes are sold in mainstream retailers. Collective Shout has exposed major bookstores and online marketplaces uh, selling erotic ebooks that feature incest and child abuse. And we've also exposed Instagram's hosting of sexualized images of underage girls, sometimes even prepubescent girls. Can we really separate men's demand for child sex abuse dolls modeled on the bodies of prepubescent girls from a wider culture in which girls are sexualized and treated as appropriate objects of men's sexual entertainment? Maybe the answer isn't in finding new ways to cater to men's sexual desires, but to go to the source and address the cultural factors at play that encourage and legitimize predatory attitudes towards girls. Supporters of child sex abuse dolls claim that they could prevent the sexual abuse of living children, but there's no evidence for this. And it's difficult to imagine how research of this nature could ever be carried out ethically. A 2019 report from the Australian Institute of Criminology suggests that the opposite is true. The authors reviewed the research on sex dolls, child sexual exploitation material, and sexual offending against children and concluded that there was no evidence that child sex abuse dolls will prevent child, child sexual abuse and that they could increase the risk of child abuse from the report. It is reasonable to assume that interaction with child sex dolls could increase the likelihood of child sexual abuse by desensitizing the user to the physical, emotional and psychological harm caused by child sexual abuse and normalizing the behavior in the mind of the abuser. The report also suggests that child sex offenders could use the childlike dolls as a tool to groom children for sexual abuse, just as predators have utilized pornography in the past to groom children. In conclusion, the arguments made in support of the production of child sex abuse dolls are baseless, unconvincing, and serve vested interests. Child sex abuse dolls are not simply a sex toy like any other. They are deliberately designed to emulate the experience of sexually abusing a child. There's nothing victimless about dolls that encourage the sexual abuse of children. Sexually objectifying children puts them at risk and could lead to an increase in child sexual abuse rather than a reduction. Men's sexual desires cannot come at the expense of the rights of women and girls. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll be sticking around, so feel free to ask any questions through the Q&A option and I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, you can also connect with me on Twitter at Caitlin underscore Roper or follow the work of Collective Shout. Uh, and we're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. YouTube. Thanks again.